Good evening from the Channel Studio in London for your international news around the world in five. Russia has launched a wave of missiles at Ukraine a day after Germany and the United States pledged tanks to aid Kyiv's fight against the invasion. In the capital, crowds of people took cover in underground metro stations. According to officials, one person died and two others were injured after strikes hit a building in Kyiv. Officials also reported strikes on two energy facilities in the southern region of Odessa. The attack came as Russia said it received the tank offer as Western involvement in the conflict. Nine Palestinians have been killed during an Israeli military raid in the occupied West Bank. Palestinian health officials say it's the deadliest raid in years. An elderly woman was reported among the dead in the flashpoint town of Janine. The Israeli military said its troops went in to arrest Islamic Jihad militants planning major attacks. The Palestinian presidency has accused Israel of massacre in the northern town, which has been the scene of repeated raids in recent months. France has agreed to a request from Burkina Faso's military leaders to withdraw all its troops from the country. Burkina Faso, which is currently battling an Islamist insurgency, says it wants to defend itself. There are currently 400 French special forces in Burkina Faso who have just one month to leave. France says it would also recall its ambassador to the country for consultations. Last year, French troops also left neighboring Mali, where they had spent eight years fighting jihadists. Tens of thousands of people have marked Australia's National Day by attending protest rallies in cities across the nation, amid a rising political and social reckoning with the country's colonial history. Australia Day commemorates the date that the British colonial fleet sailed into Sydney Harbour more than two centuries ago. In Sydney, the capital of New South Wales, Australia's most populous state, large crowds gathered in support of Indigenous Australians. Nobody's got the right to celebrate genocide. That's it. This is ground zero genocide. Ground zero happened here on 26th of January, 1788. Nobody should be celebrating. It's not an event to celebrate. I think it's really important that we come out and protest today and show support in any way we can for Indigenous Australians. It's actually the 85th day of mourning this year, so our Indigenous Australians have been protesting this for 85 years. It's not really televised, but it's been going on for so long. So, yeah, I think it's important that we show up and we mourn with them and, yeah, stand in solidarity, I guess. India has showcased its military and its cultural diversity in a colourful parade celebrating its 74th Republic Day. The public holiday marks the anniversary of India, officially adopting its constitution, making it a sovereign republic. Its highlight is a parade which is held in capital city Delhi and telecast live across the country. Every year, the country also invites a foreign dignitary as a chief guest to the parade. This year, Egypt's president, Abdul Fattah al-Sisi, was the guest of honor. And finally, Francesca and Maria Ricciardi have celebrated their 100th birthday, surrounded by 50 grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Born in 1923, the twin sisters doubled off their ages and celebrated the day as their 200th birthday. Francesca says she never imagined they would live this long and described the milestone as a gift from God. The sisters worked in the fields as farmers and never moved from their small village in southeast Italy. And that's your international news around the world in five. Now back to the channel studios in Lagos.